What if you could easily make sure your drinking water is clean with a simple DIY project you can start today? Imagine being able to purify your water in just a few easy steps. How great would it be to make something so important, like clean water, safe and satisfying to use with your own hands? Hello everyone, welcome back to our channel, Clean Hydration. Today in this video, we will discuss DIY water filtration, simple techniques for safe drinking. Water. Clean drinking water is very important for our health, but we often don't think about it much. Things like natural disasters and old pipes can make our drinking water unsafe. What if you could make sure your water is clean right at home? Let's look at how easy it is to filter your water yourself, to keep it free from dirt and germs. The science of water filtration. Understanding the science behind water filtration is crucial for appreciating the effectiveness and necessity of our DIY water filtration techniques. Water, the source of life, can also be a vessel for various contaminants detrimental to our health. Let's delve into what these contaminants are, how filtration works to remove them, and why certain materials like activated charcoal, sand, and gravel are chosen for the job. Types of Water Contaminants Water contaminants can be broadly categorized into physical, chemical, biological, and radiological. Physical contaminants mainly include sediment or organic material suspended in the water, affecting its clarity and quality. Chemical contaminants are elements or compounds. These include nitrogen, bleach, salts, pesticides, metals, toxins produced by bacteria, and human or animal drugs. Biological contaminants are organisms in water. They can be bacteria, viruses, protozoa, and parasites. How Filtration Works The primary goal of filtration is to remove these contaminants from water, making it safe for consumption. Filtration works through two main processes, physical removal and chemical transformation. Physical filtration involves straining water to remove larger particles through a physical barrier. Materials with different pore sizes, such as sand and gravel, are used to progressively filter out sediment and other particulates. Chemical filtration involves passing water through an active material that removes contaminants chemically. This can mean altering their physical chemistry to make them harmless or trapping them. Key materials in DIY water filtration. Activated charcoal. Activated charcoal or activated carbon is a form of carbon process to have small, low-volume pores that increase the surface area available for adsorption or chemical reactions. It's highly effective at removing chlorine, sediments, volatile organic compounds, VOCs, taste, and odor from water. It can also reduce the levels of some pesticides and industrial solvents. Sand. Sand filtration is one of the oldest and most effective methods for water purification. Sand traps particulate matter through both physical and biological mechanisms. As water passes through the sand layer, particles are physically trapped in the spaces between sand grains. Gravel Gravel is used as a support layer underneath the sand and activated charcoal in a filtration system. It doesn't directly purify the water, but helps distribute the flow evenly and prevents the formation of channels in the sand and charcoal layers above which could reduce the effectiveness of the filtration process. Now let us dive into making our own DIY water filtration for safe drinking. Materials you will need. 1. Clean plastic bottle or PVC pipe. Choose a size based on the amount of water you want to filter at a time. A standard 2-liter plastic bottle is a good starting point for personal use. 2. Activated charcoal. Acts as the chemical layer, removing odors and improving taste. 3. Sand. Coarse sand will serve as a preliminary filter for larger particulates, while fine sand will catch smaller impurities. 4. Gravel. Small stones or pebbles will prevent sand and charcoal from escaping and help distribute water flow evenly. 5. Cotton or coffee filters. These will serve as the final barrier, catching any remaining particles before the water exits the filter. 6. Scissors or a knife for cutting the plastic bottle or PVC pipe. 7. Container, to catch the filtered water. DIY steps. Number 1. Prepare the container. 
If using a plastic bottle, cut the bottom off. This will be your filtering unit. Turn it upside down, cap at the bottom. If you choose a PVC pipe, ensure one end is sealed or has a cap that allows for the insertion of filtering materials. Number two, layer one, cotton or coffee filter. Place cotton or a coffee filter inside the neck of the bottle or the bottom of the PVC pipe. This will prevent the finer filtering materials from washing out. Number three, layer two, activated charcoal. Add a layer of activated charcoal on top of the cotton coffee filter. This layer should be about one to two inches thick. The activated charcoal will remove chemicals and impurities, improving taste and odor. Number four, layer three, fine sand. Pour in about two to three inches of fine sand over the charcoal. The fine sand acts as a more precise filter, catching smaller particulate matter missed by the charcoal. Number five, layer four, coarse sand. Add another two to three inches of coarse sand on top of the fine sand. This layer helps in further filtering out any larger particles and protecting the finer layers below. Number six, layer five, gravel. The next layer consists of small pebbles or gravel. This layer supports the sand and charcoal layers, preventing them from being displaced by the water flow and aiding in even water distribution. Number seven, layer six, larger stones. If there's room, add a layer of larger stones above the gravel. This isn't necessary but can help in further filtering large debris and in distributing the water evenly across the top of the filter. Number eight, finishing up. Once all the layers are in place, pour water into the top of the filter and place a clean container underneath to catch the filtered water. Initially, allow the water to run through the filter several times until it runs clear. Number nine, maintenance. Over time, the top layers of sand and charcoal will become clogged with particulates. When this happens, remove and replace these layers to ensure your filter continues to operate effectively. Testing and using your water filter. After building your DIY water filter, it's essential to know how to properly test and use it to ensure your water is as clean and safe as possible. Testing not only verifies the effectiveness of your filter, but also helps you understand when it's time to replace or clean its components. Here's a guide on how to test and use your DIY water filter for the best results. Testing your water filter. Number one, visual inspection. Initially, observe the clarity of the water. If your filter is working correctly, the water should appear significantly clearer after filtration. While this doesn't guarantee the removal of all contaminants, it's a good initial sign of effectiveness. Number two, taste test. Taste the water before and after filtration. While taste shouldn't be the sole criterion for safety, improvements in taste can indicate the removal of certain chemicals and impurities. Number three, pH test. Use a pH test strip to measure the water's acidity or alkalinity. While the ideal pH level of drinking water should be around 6.5 to 8.5, this test can indicate if your filter is effectively neutralizing the pH of the water. Number four, conductivity test. Conductivity meters measure the water's ability to conduct electricity, which correlates with the presence of ions in the water. A decrease in conductivity after filtration suggests the removal of dissolved salts and other minerals. Number five, home water testing kits. For a more thorough analysis, use a home water testing kit available at hardware stores. These kits can test for specific contaminants like bacteria, lead, pesticides, and nitrites, nitrates. Number six, professional testing. For the most accurate assessment, consider sending a sample of your filtered water to a professional water testing laboratory. They can provide a comprehensive analysis of the water's quality and safety using your water filter. Number one, initial flush. Run water through your filter several times before using it for drinking. This helps to remove any loose carbon particles or manufacturing residues. Number two, regular use. Pour water slowly into the top of the filter and collect it from the bottom. Ensure the collection container is clean and sterile. Number three, maintenance. Over time, the filter materials, especially the top layers of sand and charcoal, will become saturated with contaminants. Regularly replace these materials to maintain the filter's effectiveness. Clean the container and the outside of the filter regularly to prevent contamination. Number four, safety precautions. 
Remember, while DIY filters can significantly improve water quality, they may not remove all pathogens or heavy metals. For questionable water sources, consider additional purification methods, such as boiling or chemical disinfectants, especially for drinking water. Testing and using your DIY water filter involves more than just assembling it and running water through it. Regular testing, maintenance, and proper use are crucial to ensuring the water you consume is safe. By understanding the limitations and care requirements of your DIY water filter, you can make informed decisions about water consumption and potentially improve the health and well-being of yourself and those around you. Making your own water filter is a smart and creative way to get clean drinking water. By putting together sand, charcoal, and gravel, you learn a lot about how water gets cleaned and how to check if the filter works well. This skill is very useful, especially where clean water isn't easy to find, and it shows how we can rely on ourselves more. Teaching others to do the same helps everyone live healthier and take better care of our planet. But remember, a homemade filter can't fix every water problem. Sometimes the water is too dirty, and we need other ways to clean it or professional advice to make sure it's safe. That's a wrap for today's video. I hope you benefited from today's video. If you did, please do like, share, and subscribe to our channel, and press the notification bell to get updates as soon as we post a new informative video. Thanks for tuning in.